near, far, wherever you are. Black Sabbath by Black Sabbath. That actually works this time. This is Black Sabbath's first album, and many people, too many people, in my opinion, say that this is the first heavy metal album of all time. Well, I'm here to let you know that you're wrong. This is a hard rock, blues rock album that came out in 1970. And there's definitely a song on this album, Black Sabbath, that was a major leap forward as far as the development of heavy metal, which stemmed from hard rock, but this right here is not a heavy metal album. I've never bought it. I still don't buy it. Uh, in fact, when I first reviewed Black Sabbath, I was pretty harsh on it because I was expecting heavy metal because that's what everybody said, you know, it's the first heavy metal album. I was just like, you know what, I like heavy metal quite a bit, so I'm going to listen to this thing. And what I got was something that sounded a lot more similar to Led Zeppelin, which I didn't want at that time. So it took me a long time to uh, come back to this album. And what really brought me back to this album actually was Paranoid. I think Paranoid is one of the best albums of all time. and. I wanted a little bit more of the, the, the kind of sound that you get from Paranoid and pretty much starting with Master Reality, um, Black Sabbath went to like gloss up their sound a lot more and they would kind of do that for the rest of their career. So I went backwards and I was just like, well, I'll try out Black Sabbath and that album, this album that I'm reviewing right here has a much more similar sound to Paranoid. So I, I definitely enjoyed it from from a sound perspective so black sabbath's debut album is definitely a monumental album for a couple of reasons um it is uh, probably the biggest influence on heavy metal um in history especially nowadays um also black sabbath recorded it in one day which wasn't that um rare in those days because a lot of bands before they would even get to um, a studio before they would even get signed by any kind of a label they had been pretty much playing um, all year round all day long this album definitely has a very loose feeling it's it's essentially a live album with no crowd and a few overdubs for the um, lead guitar parts I believe that's pretty much the only time they ever overdubbed anything on the album so you get a very very raw sound I absolutely love the sound of this album you can hear everything. It has a really, really good uh, balance to it. The drums sound fantastic. The bass sounds fantastic. Much more traditional kind of bluesy slash jazz feel as, as far as the, the rhythms go. We don't really get the iconic riffs that we will start getting on the very next album from Tony, but there's still some awesome riffs on this album. So yeah, the uh, album opens up with um, the title track for the album and the, the band's self-titled track or whatever you want to call it uh black sabbath i think that was a pretty good way to open the album because it was very unique and let's be honest it actually was a song that got them a lot of attention at first it was negative attention but in the long run it ended up being good has it aged well i don't really think so um i mean for what it's trying to be what it would eventually become and turn into which is heavy metal there's plenty of that nowadays um and at the time, you know, it almost feels like some members of the band, especially when the song picks up and it goes, yeah, to the fast part, it kind of feels like Bill is, he's not really sure what to play. And that was a big thing about Once Again These Days is people were trying to figure out how to do things. So he ends up just playing kind of a triplet on the snare drum. And to be honest, I actually don't like that at all. It doesn't feel like it should be that at all. Another thing is it takes quite a while to build up to that point, and sometimes that can be a little bit boring. I'm just going to be straight up honest about that. Um, and I guess in that way, uh, that's how a lot of heavy metal would turn out to be in the long run. But overall, it is a great song. It's very effective. But after a while, um, I find myself skipping it every time I listen to the album. Then we get into The Wizard, one of my favorite songs on the entire album. And right off the bat, man, it just goes off into what the album's actually going to be. Just hard rock, basically. Bluesy hard rock. Um, and it's pretty cool because you got the um, harmonica to open up the song. I believe it's Ozzy playing 
the harmonica. And it's great. I mean, it's just a great song. It's very catchy. Amazing performance by Ozzy in there. Really selling it. Um, it's about a wizard, and it works. And then it goes into Wasp, Behind the Wall of Sleep, Basically, and NIB. Um, depending on which version you have, it's going to flow like that either way. And all these songs, or all these parts, are really good. NIB is uh, especially good. It's one of the standout songs on this album. Um, and in many ways it will foreshadow um, very much what the band's going to do later on down the line because it's actually a little bit more intricate. And it might be the strongest single track on the album in my opinion. Um, the standout. Either way, uh, all these songs right here are really good. Um, it's just quite a bit of jamming, to be honest, and it, de it definitely sounds like a live performance. And the next kind of connected track that we get is A Bit of Finger, Sleeping Village, and Warning. And this is another uh, great um, kind of sequence of songs, depending on which version you have, by the way. Um, uh, yeah, I actually very much like it. Then there's Wicked World, which actually took me quite a while to get around to liking. For a long time, I kind of viewed it as a filler, and I guess I still kind of do. It's pretty weak compared to some of the other stronger songs in the album. But, you know, it's, it's definitely a lot more jazzy than the rest of the album. But because of that, there is a little bit of novelty. I mean, it is the song on the album that kind of goes all the way towards... The, the kind of jazzy feel, which you'll get on the first couple of albums, definitely from Sabbath a little bit, but Wicked World does it, and it's it's definitely grown on me over the years. The only song on the album that I don't like is Evil Woman. I just don't like it compared to pretty much every other song on this album. So yeah, Black Sabbath. I, I actually adore this album. This is one of my favorite albums of all time. Um, I mean, whenever I go back to the late 60s, early 70s, start listening to albums, I mean, this one is always, always welcome. It's just, uh, it's, it's great. It's an easy listen. Um, for anybody who hasn't listened to it yet, I know there's going to be some people who haven't listened to it, and they've heard over the years um, that it is the first heavy metal album, and it's heavy metal and metal. It's, it's not heavy metal, actually, at all. You will not like it unless you like old school hard rock, I mean, because that's what you're going to get on this album. It's a damn good album, love it. I'm gonna give Black Sabbath, by Black Sabbath, a 9.5 out of 10, and I'll see you guys later on Earth.